Hey, what's up everybody? It's your mortgage expert, Brian McCauley here. So in 2024, more people than ever are still buying houses in the great state of Texas and people wanna know why. Stick around, in this video, I'm gonna teach you why Texas is the most valuable state in the country and things are not gonna change for a while. You know, as home buying season continues to ramp up, there are really three big things on everyone's mind. Affordability, stability, and competition. But I'm gonna add a fourth one in on that, which is return on investment. One of the best things you can do when you buy a house is bank on the fact that real estate, much like the stock market, historically is gonna go up over time. Um, it's gonna make you money. The secret when buying properties is buy and hold, not wait, wait to buy. I can tell you, for personally, I've owned four houses as my primaries in the past. 13 years I made $2,000 on one of my houses after I sold it of course that was coming out of the subprime crash so that's okay the second one I bought I bought had it for 18 months in a very hot spot in Dallas and the lower Greenville area and made about 60,000 bucks on the sale after 18 months and then the house I've been in right now for the last seven years I bought it for just over 900,000 it's probably worth anywhere from 17 to 18 so Real estate, historically in the great state of Texas, appreciates on average at 5% a year. Texas is still the most valued and most popular state, and it's only getting stronger. And in today's video, I wanna talk about why. Whether you're in Dallas, Austin, Houston, San Antonio, Texas really just takes the cake overall when it comes to being the best state and the smartest place to buy. Now, yes, there are some downsides in Texas as well. Some of the heat, some people don't like the politics. That's okay, you don't have to live here. But when you compare it to the Californias of the world, the Floridas of the world, you know, these are big states with big economies that have a lot of population. Um, but when you look at the statistics on growth over year, no state income tax, crime rates, all these things matter. And so a lot more businesses are coming here because they're business friendly economics. And I want everybody to pay attention to, you know, yes, things are expensive. It's a strange dynamic where housing prices are still going up, where mortgage rates are stuck somewhere in the high sixes to low sevens, but that should tell you a positive thing. The negative about that is, boy, it's expensive. The positive thing is, well, if things are doing this well right now in Texas, specifically in Dallas, when rates are still trying to break down below seven and prices are still good going up, what's gonna happen as the city continues to grow, as businesses continue to come here, as mortgage rates eventually fall, because they will fall, I just don't think you're gonna see a lot of it before the election, maybe a little bit. I think, honestly, and this is just my personal prediction, take this with a grain of salt, I think the interest rate bottom will be somewhere around Christmas 2025. I think rates will get somewhere around five and a quarter, maybe five and a half, maybe 499, but I think, I think five and a quarter is safe. So if you've already got high demand on inventory that's not really out there and it's pushing prices up while interest rates are high, think about what it's going to look like as interest rates drop. That only drives demand up more, but why do so many people like the Texas? Well, let's go through the list, right? One friendly people. Texas has good old school friendly people. They have a great booming economy. They have a big landmass. You know, what really put Texas on the map, in my opinion, was COVID. During the two or three year run for COVID, I helped more families move to Texas from California, New York, Seattle, and Chicago than ever before. These people are not only buying real estate that they can't believe that a million dollar place in Texas gets you 5,000 square feet and a quarter acre, where in California it gets you a house the size of this room. But the second thing they are buying is they are buying the quality of life. And I think that's a big thing that people have to pay attention to right now is yes, you're gonna buy for the real estate and all these other things, but what people don't love about the country and where things are going and they like about it, Texas is the quality of life, meaning the freedom that, that you have, the business friendly policies, the no state income tax. I mean, you can literally make 200 grand in California and pay 8% in state income tax, and that goes straight to the government. You can't track it. 
that's anywhere from 16 to 18 grand a year. Now, yes, even though there's no state income tax here, the property ta taxes are high, but or personally, I would rather give my money to property taxes. That goes to schools, that goes to hospitals, that goes to parks, that goes to police officers. These are things that, you know, reinvest back into the community that people care about that will keep your neighborhoods and the schools better and cleaner and safer. And I think that's a better reinvestment than just having the government take some state money off the top and go somewhere that we can't see it. But the net net regardless is still better for the people that are moving from income tax states and maybe the property taxes are slightly higher here, but again, it's going into their community, not into somebody else's pocket. The net net is less and it's safer. The other thing people like about Texas is the schools. Schools are so good here. They're 5 day schools, they're big in football, they're great for recruiting, they help promote a lot. You know, you'll also find with Texas is the massive expansion, especially here in Dallas. I mean, you've got PGA, you've got Universal Studios, you've got Disney, you've got all these giant companies coming here. Again, why? There's room, business-friendly laws, no state income tax, affordable housing, even though housing is expensive everywhere, it's more affordable here. And so when you get the businesses coming in here, that drives in other businesses because they're trying to compete, but that also drives in a big population. I mean, when you've got, I think it's 8,000 people between Universal, Disney, and PGA, 8,000 employees, all of those people need houses. So you're like, okay, well that's 8,000 new houses we have to build or buy or turn over or buy and sell and build apartment complexes. So these things just continue to compound on top of each other. And I think it's one of the reasons why a lot of people are starting to move here. Now, if you're not in the market to buy a house, the same benefits are still here for a renter. Now, while rent renting is getting more expensive, I don't think it's a long-term way to create wealth, but it might be a nice fit for you and your lifestyle now. You still get all the other stuff. Good people, business-friendly economy, great laws. I also think people overlook the fact that Dallas and Texas is a great sport, sports state and a great sports city. I mean, in Dallas alone, you've got the Texas Rangers, are the world champs. You had the Dallas Stars make the Western Conference Finals. You had the Dallas Mavericks that went to the NBA Finals. And so all these things continue to propel the city and the state from a popularity standpoint. It is now becoming more attractive for athletes to come and play here. One, again, because the state is doing well, but also if you're an athlete and you get paid a $100 million contract in California and the state income tax is eight to 10%, you're going to give up eight to 10%. Or if you come to Dallas and play for the Mavericks and you get a $100 million contract and there's no state income tax, you get to keep that money. These are big decision makers for businesses and people when trying to establish what they're going to do, where they're going to move, and how to adjust the pros and the cons. We also have a wonderful police force here that is usually fully supported by majority of the citizens. You know, there's a couple downsides to the Texas booming so quickly. One is the traffic. That just comes with the territory. Luckily, we have the landmass to do it. We have the construction workers to do it. We have the budgets to do it, but it is a little bit stickier and a little bit tighter when it comes to traffic than it used to be. Other bad thing about the Texas and late Jaloon, late june sorry early july and august it is hot it is super hot you got to find a pool you got to find an air conditioner or you got to find a lake other than that you got to sit your buttons so let's talk about lakes texas has great lakes there are so many wonderful lakes around this state from secondary homes and vacation homes and lake houses and possum kingdom this is cedar creek and lake austin and lake Tra travis these are all places that people love to go recreate, buy homes, hang out, and meet people. And so what you're seeing is Texas has always been great. It's just that everybody didn't know about it. COVID put it on the map because people immediately wanted freedom. They didn't want to be restricted. They wanted affordable housing. They wanted nicer people. They wanted friendlier laws. And so all this combined together during the pandemic and it put a big spotlight on the state. Now the state is more popular than ever. I believe it's the most valuable state, which is also why I think buying a property in Texas in the right city is a good investment. We have to ask ourselves, is Texas gonna go backwards? Is it gonna get smaller? Are businesses going to leave? Are, is the population gonna go down? I think the answer to all of the, those is no. So as this continues to grow in the state, you combine that with first time home buyer incentives, 
Texas just moved the homestead exemption protection amount on your primary home from 40,000 to 100, which gives you a bigger break on property tax taxes well, well there. And then again, when you get to a place to where interest rates start to trend down, which I think will be early 25 and probably bottom at the end of 25, and you get things going in the sixes and in the fives, imagine what that's going to do to the market. So as you're taking this into consideration, you're thinking the affordability, the stability, it's a stable state, it's a stable city, things really go backwards and if they do it's for a short amount of time and you get great return on your investment. Return on investment looks like I buy a $500,000 house. I put 5% down. That's 25 grand. On average, homes in Texas appreciate at 5% a year. That's pretty conservative. So if you buy a $500,000 house and it appreciates at 5% a year, that means it goes up by about $25,000 a year. So if you stay in that $500,000 house for four years and it appreciates at 25K a year, that $500,000 house in four years is now worth 600,000 bucks. So if you were to sell it after paying fees, all these things here and there, you probably make out of your 100, probably 80. Now that is good return on your investments. You put down 25,000, you made 80 after everybody was paid out. That is great ROI. And it's tax-free as a primary home once every five years, up to $250,000 if you're single, up to $500,000 if you're married. Consult your local CPA just to double check that, but I believe that it's accurate. I mean, there's nothing like tax-free money, which is another reason why you should buy a house, specifically in Texas. But regardless, this is another key benefit and factor to home ownership. So again, I've seen Texas start to trend up since 2018. I personally own five properties myself. If I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't buy them. I bought them all in 17, 18, 20, and 21. Again, the advice I'm giving you now is buy and hold. Things are only gonna continue to get better here. They're only gonna grow more. They're only gonna go up. Uh, if you can buy now, even though things feel more expensive from an interest rate standpoint, I recommend buying now. Why? Because when rates get to the bottom, it's gonna be three times as hard to get that house. That's probably be gonna be a year from now, but also the property value is gonna go up another 10, 15, 20%. So where houses appreciate on average of 5%, you don't an interest rate drop and they go from 5% to 10 to 15 so you'll make even more money on the surge if you're able to avoid that so these are just some things to take into consideration when buying a house but more importantly buying in the great state of texas and buying in the city of dallas as things continue to expand demand goes up and our state continues to strengthen its position as the number one most valuable state in the country. Cut. So listen, if you found this video about Texas useful, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, maybe even share this with somebody that you know that could benefit from this information. And if you wanna have a conversation around your future home ownership needs, talk about financials, or maybe even get pre-approved, do us a favor, call us, email us, text us. We're always here for you. Until next time, stay tuned.